done before. And friend, there's, there's something here for us this morning. If we'll just let the Lord show it to us, and if we'll let the Lord deal with our hearts about it, amen, there's something good here for us today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to call upon thee. Thank you for the good singing. Lord, thank you, Lord, for the good fellowship. Lord, I pray right now, God, you bless us around the Word of God. Lord, help me. God, I need your touch. Lord, I want your best for this church and for my life. I plead the blood of Jesus right now. God, rebuke the devil from here. Lord, I pray, God, that he'd get out of the way, and I pray the Spirit of God would take over. God, cleanse me. Lord, make me a fit vessel. Lord, I pray this morning, God, the Spirit of God, Lord, would help us, Lord, today to worship Thee. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In verse number 21 of Matthew chapter number 15, here's a story of, a woman that had heard about the Lord. Now, this was not a, a Jewish woman. This was a Gentile. And we know that Christ came to the Jew first, but also to the Greek. The gospel was preached to the Jew first and then the Greek. And so we see this woman here that had, had evidently, apparently, she had heard about the miracles of Christ, about how that he had fed thousands, how he had healed many, and that how, you know, the, the great things that he hath done. And she had a daughter that was ill. And so by faith, she goes to Jesus. So with that, uh, with that little bit of thought in her minds, let's read the scripture. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It's not me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Oh, what a story. Oh, what a story we have. I want to ask you a question today. What do you want in church? What do you want in your Christian life? And, and here as of late, you know, this, our lives are not long left in any of us. From the youngest to the oldest, our lives are quickly passing from us. Our time is quickly leaving. It just seems like just, you know, just yesterday I was running around as a teenager and, and uh, getting into things probably that I shouldn't be. Seems like yesterday me and my wife got married and we've been married in you know, years. But time is quickly passing and we don't have a lot of time left. What do I want? For my Christian life in these last days that we live in. Church, let me tell you something, Gabriel's Creek. We have only a limited amount of time left to worship down here on this earth. What do we want to do with the church in the coming days, months, years, whatever we've got left? What do we want for the church? Am I happy with my life going on? Is that, I've been praying lately, God, do something for this preacher. God, do something for me. I've got kind of jealous here and kind of stingy with my prayers here lately. You're in the spit row, I'm sorry. And uh, I've got kind of, you know, kind of myself wanting and asking God to help me. Lord, help me. God, give me what you want me to have. 
Lord, I want to be what you want me to be. I don't have a lot of time left. Lord, help me. What do you want? What do you want? Now, I came with, with, with an illustration and didn't bring it. And so, Sister Ann was kind enough to run home between services and get me what I needed for an illustration. And so, I've got a bag of crumbs. Anybody want some crumbs? <laughs> do you want a crumb? No. Anybody want some crumbs? Come on, somebody in here wants to settle for a crumb. Surely somebody wants a crumb. You want a crumb? Nobody wants a crumb. That's exactly right. You want a crumb? That's right. Anybody else want a crumb? Anybody want crackers? You want crackers? Here, have a cracker. He didn't want a crumb, but he wants a cracker. You want a cracker? Anybody else want a cracker? I've got more. Anybody else want one? I got some more here. They say, preacher, why in the world did you do all that? And I thought nobody's ever going to take a crumb from me. But it is better than nothing. A crumb is better than nothing. But a whole cracker is better. Is it not? You wouldn't eat that cracker. That's fine. I gave that to you to eat. You can eat them crackers. That's fine. Eat them crackers. I done ate two of them over there just to make sure they wasn't stale. I knew I wouldn't bring stale crackers. But listen, what are you willing to settle for? And I want to ask you a question this morning. Title of our message, don't settle for the crumbs when you can have the whole cracker. Don't settle for the crumbs when you can have the whole cracker. Now, how do I get that out of this message? Let's look at some things here. If we ourselves can put our lives in perspective as Christians, are we settling for less than what God has to give us? Well, I have, I'm just going to tell you, I'll be honest with you, sometimes I'll settle for less than the best because I may not be willing to do what it, what it takes to have the best that God wants me to have. It's easy to get crumbs. Ask my beagle if it's easy to get crumbs. My beagle will go all over the house and pick up every crumb that's in the house. Like a vacuum cleaner sucks them right up. It likes those crumbs, but if I offer that dog of mine a cracker, he'll eat the cracker, enjoy the cracker. Me, friend, I want the cracker, and I want to leave the crumbs alone. Sure, it's better than nothing, but I want the whole cracker. Why settle for the crumbs when you can have the whole cracker? Many times churches settle for the crumbs when we can have the whole cracker. Amen? Many times we settle for just a little bit of what God's got to offer when God's got it all to offer for us as far as worship, as far as fellowship, as far as promoting the gospel. Friend, I think Gabriel's Creek Baptist Church can be the most powerful church anywhere around here. I believe that. I believe we've got a good start at it. Amen? But it has to be up to every individual church member or person in attendance this morning whether or not you decide, for myself, I want God's best. For myself, I don't want to settle for the crumbs anymore. I want all that God's got to offer me. And friend, if we'll get in that state of mind as a church member and as a believer, there is no end to what God will do for us here at Gables Creek Baptist Church. We see some facts about this. This was the first time that Christ ministered to a Gentile. 
This is the very first time. He came to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But in this scripture is the first time that he uh, crossed the lines of, of uh, you know, uh, presenting himself to the Jews. And he also ministered to a Gentile woman, those that Jews didn't have no dealings with. The same way as the woman at the well. Later on, he ministered to her. That's those that the Jews had no dealings with. Then this is the first time that a Gentile addressed him as the son of David. And that's what Jesus was to the uh, Jewish folk. He was the son of David. And when she said that, he made no reply to her when she spoke to him as the son of David. But when she acknowledged him as Lord, he immediately answered her. When she said, Lord, help me, Lord. And when she said that, Lord, help me, he answered and said, it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. She said, it's not me. And what does that mean? That means it's, it's, they were considered dogs. Now, Christ is not belittling her. He's just letting her know that it wasn't meat or it wasn't acceptable to take the, uh, the, you know, what that he had to offer and give it to the Gentiles. But she was persistent in her calling out to him. Jesus was working a miracle here. He was teaching the disciples something. He was teaching this woman something. He was teaching them that he not only came for the Jew, but also for the Gentile. And so he said to her, she said, Lord, that's right. She said, Lord, that's of a truth. But she said, Lord, the dogs eat of the crumbs from the master's table. And that has some great significance. Back then when they would eat food with their, you know, at that time was plentiful. And, and the meaning of this is that they didn't have napkins so many times they would use a piece of bread to wipe off their hands or their mouth and give it to the dogs. The dogs would eat it. Let me tell you something, friend. God don't want us to sit under the table and eat the crumbs from his table. God wants us to pull up to the table and eat the whole meal. Amen. I want to eat the whole meal. I want to have the whole cracker. I want to have all that God has got for me. So what did she do in her prayer as she's praying to Jesus right here? In her, in her, in her prayer of talking to Jesus, see, that's what prayer is. She is just communicating with the Lord. Friend, we need to pray. We need to communicate with the Lord and it doesn't have to be uh, some formal thing that we do. We just talk to the Lord as she was talking to him. She cried to the Lord. And she cried, O oh Lord, thou son of David. This she, per, she petitioned him in prayer when she said, Have mercy upon me. And the reason for her prayer was not even for herself, but for her daughter's sake. She prayed, she cried, she prayed to the Lord, the son of David. She wanted all the benefits that Christ had to offer. She wasn't going to settle for the crumbs. She wanted all, and she was stayed there until God answered her prayer. Until the Lord said to her, O woman, great is thy faith. If she had went away, she would not have received the blessing, but she stayed there until she got the answer that, that from the Lord. Now many times we pray, but we give up before the answer comes. Many times we pray, but we give up because we don't get the answer we want. But let me tell you something, if we're persistent in prayer to the Lord, God in heaven will answer our prayer. He will answer our prayer. Sometimes it's not exactly what we want. But he will answer our prayer if we are persistent and determined in our heart, God, we're going to have the whole thing. Now, how serious are you about serving the Lord today? 
Everybody bow your head just a minute. Nobody looking around. Right now, you be honest with yourself and with the Lord. How many of you here this morning at Gables Creek Baptist Church, member or not, would slip up your hand and say, Preacher, I really, in the depths of my soul, in the depths of my heart, I want all that God has to offer me, and I'm willing to do what's necessary to have the whole cracker. Raise your hand. Amen. You can put them down. Some folks raised their hand, some folks didn't. Listen. If you want all that God's got for you, you've got to be willing. You look back up. You've got to be willing to do all that God wants you to do. You have to search your life, search your heart, and determine, am I in the will of God? And the happiest place and the best place you'll ever be as a Christian is in the center of God's perfect will. Now look, let's look at about three or four things this morning, and I'll be through shortly. Number one, we find out about the crumbs that they're the, most, they're the least desirable are the crumbs. I couldn't hardly get anybody to take the crumbs. Nobody wanted them. And then I started offering the crackers, and everybody, you know, you know, everybody would take a cracker if I had enough to offer. But they're the least desirable. They're what's left over after all the good stuff is gone. Now, there's one crumb that I like. And Brother Vetus knows what that is. When you go to barbecuing a bunch of pork roast or a pig, there's little, little old things that come off of it that I love that part of the crumb. I'd rather have it, but that's the only thing I know of. Ain't that right, Brother Vetus? But I ought to tell you something, friend. We need not ever settle for the least and the less of what God's got to offer us. We ought to want His best because it's ours to be had. The crumbs are not to be compared with the best things that God has to offer. Now these crumbs laying here, they're good to put on a salad, maybe. But they're not, they're not the whole cracker. They're not what you really want to eat and have in your hand if you're eating potted meat. John said. How would you like to have a can of potted meat, John, in a, in a bag full of crumbs? You'd have to do the best you could with it, wouldn't you? You'd manage it. And I know how I'd manage it. I'd just open the thing up and dump it down in there and mix it all up together and go at it. But that ain't as, that ain't as good as having the potted meat in the whole cracker. The crumbs kind of change the flavor of things. It just ain't the same. I've never went to a restaurant and ordered crumbs. Have you? Now, I know somebody's going to have in their mind, my preacher, I ordered crumbs one time down at Long John Silver's because I like them. <laughs> I know that. But that ain't nothing but a mouthful of fried cholesterol is all that is. You might like them, but they're not good for you, amen? I'd rather have the whole piece of chicken or the whole piece of fish than to have them crumbs. So why should we settle for the crumbs? Proverbs 8, 32. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction, and be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, obtaining the post of my doors. For whoso uh, findeth of me findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Friend, let me tell you today that we hear and we watch for God, as the psalmist says, and we hear and watch daily for him. We will receive the good things of the Lord. If we look for what God's got for us, and we seek what God's got for us, and we seek his best, God will give it to us. But first, we've got to seek the things of God. And then everything else comes right behind it. If we do what God wants us to do, God takes care of everything else. I promise you, He'll do so. 
the blessings from below come from above. Remember that. Our blessings down here come from above, come from the Father of heaven. Blessing come from following and doing God's way and not man's way. Church, as a church, if we want God's blessings on us, we have got to go the way that God wants us to go. Churches that follow the path of the world wind up dead and dried out. And you couldn't muster a you couldn't muster a holy grunt out of the crowd because there ain't nothing there. Oh, you can go get some good entertainment. You can go, you know, you can go uh, get yourself happy for a little while. But after you leave the church, you ought to have something that you can feast off of for a few days. Amen. I want what I want the best the Lord has to offer me. I want God's best. And you can church. We can have if we want it. We can have it. It's ours if we're willing to tell the Lord God. I want your best for me. I want your best for my church family. And God, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to have the best that God wants us to have as a church, as an individual. Isaiah 58, verse number 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. We gotta, we gotta let God do the thinking. We got, we must let God do the leading, and we must be followers of Him if we're to have the whole cracker, and not just the crumb. I don't want to just settle. I don't want to just settle for, for whatever I. I want, I want the best. And I, I don't believe it's wrong that we should want the greatest spiritual things that God has to offer us. Does that mean we're going to live on cloud nine all the time and walk around and never have a battle and never have a trouble and a heartache? And no, it probably means just exactly the opposite. But I'm telling you what, friend, it's worth it. The spiritual blessings are worth it far, far more than anything this world has to offer or any, any trial or tribulation we might go through. I'd rather have Jesus. Amen? You know why? Because he's still God. Amen? Amen? He's God on the mountain. He's God in the valley. He's still God. And he wants us to have his very best. God sent his very best into this world so that we could have his very best. What else? How could we want anything less? God sent his son to die for me and to die for you so that we don't have to go to hell. Why in the world do we want to give God any less than our best in these few short years that we're living on this earth? Put God first. Trust God in His Word. Accept God's ways and not man's ways. Obey God's Word. Honor God and He will honor you. Stand for God in His ways. You just got to put God first. You just got to put God first. You put God first. Listen, you can listen to me today and you can take this to heart or you can mark it down as well. Just another sermon. No, I don't want this to be just another sermon. I want this to be a message that the Holy Ghost of God takes home to your heart and says, I want, when you leave here, you're saying, I want the very, I want God's best. I get excited when I think about the best things that God has to offer us. You want God's best? Or are you happy with just whatever you can have? I want God's best. I'll close with this. Found this illustration. Abraham Lincoln said that we have forgotten the gracious hand which has preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us and have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings that we have were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. God in heaven, have you forgotten? 
All you've got is because God gave it to you. All you have is because God has what God has given you. You say, well, preacher, I don't have a lot. I don't have a lot. I've got a lot of bills, but I don't have a lot of things. But you know what? God's given me everything I do have. And no matter if you have much or if you have little, it's because God has thought favorably upon you and given you what you have. Friend, I'm a firm believer. If we give God our best, he give us our, his best. Church, if we'll give God our best, and God will do wonderful and mighty things for us here at Gables Creek. I'd love to see real revival sweep through our community, wouldn't you? How many of you would like to see that? Raise your hand. I mean real revival. Not, I don't have a lot of meetings here. We've only had one revival meeting since I've been here. But you've got to want it. And if you want it, amen, we'll have revival. Whether we have a preacher here or not, we'll have revival. There's no evangelist or preacher going to come through here and open up his, up, open up, up his briefcase and hand out revival. It comes when God's people call upon the name of God and want the cracker instead of just the crumb. What do you want today in your life? Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. I pray, God, that you bless us and help us together. Lord, help us not to settle for the least, but God, help us, Lord, to desire the best and the greatest things you've got for us as a church and as an individual. Lord, for myself, God, help me to experience the best things of the Lord. Lord, the last days that I've got here on earth, Lord, if you don't come back before I'm 100 years old. God, I pray, God, you'd let me preach that long at least. But God, if you don't, I pray, God, for the best things that you have. And I pray, God, that we'd be able to do those things that are well-pleasing in thy sight. Father, I pray for the church. God, you'd help us. Lord, convict us, God, of not wanting the best. And God, help us to desire those good things of God. Only then, God, will we know what you'll do for us. If we're willing, God, we know you'll do it. In Jesus' name, every, amen. Every head bowed, no one looking around, just for a moment. I'm not going to keep you but a minute. I want to pray someone here this morning say, Preacher, I've never been saved. I, I don't know the Lord. I'm lost. And I'm on my way to hell. This has not been a salvation message. But let me tell you something. If you don't know the Lord, you'll never have the best of God. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. There's nothing in this world on this planet worth going to hell over. I want to pray someone raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm lost. Is there one? I want to pray.